We begin with the shocking report that suggests some MPs are knowing or semi-knowingly helping foreign governments meddle in Canadian politics. That's the conclusion from a group of MPs and senators given top security clearance to look at intelligence. Now there are calls for the government to name names. The CBC's Karina Roman joins me with the latest. So, Karina, this was a bombshell when it landed late yesterday. What has the reaction been like today? Well, let's start with the reaction from the opposition, uh, because uh, it has been quite uh, scathing and concerning. While there has been a recognition that, you know, there might be laws in place right now uh, that means, you know, the names of these people cannot be shared, uh, because they're accusations and allegations based on intelligence, not evidence. They haven't gone to court or anything like that or been charged with anything. But NDP leader Jagmeet Singh uh, says that anyone who does this, anyone who is helping a foreign state rather than having the best interests of Canada at heart should not be sitting as an MP. The challenge, of course, is right now they may be, and we don't know who they are. Uh, the report, of course, talks about these instances and these examples, but the names are not there. They're redacted. Um, and because it's based on intelligence, uh, Dugmeet Singh talks as well about, well, it can't just stop there, that that intelligence can be used for something. Have a listen to what he had to say. It does bother me very much that in the same parliament where I work, some people might be voluntarily or involuntarily under the influence of a foreign power. This is very important to me. If this intelligence is true, this is deeply concerning, very serious, and we need to see the next steps taken. I believe if there's any evidence uh, that someone knowingly worked with a foreign government to influence our democracy, they should no longer be a member of parliament. Sorry, Catherine, I did it in the wrong order there, but <laughs> yes, uh, Jagmeet Singh there saying that they, they should not be sitting there and, and that intelligence can be used to perhaps give reasonable cause to then open an investigation to get that evidence that actually can be brought past the level of secret reports and classified uh, information. And, and Yves-Francois Blachette also saying um, that every caucus should have a reckoning, uh, because he feels so uncomfortable, and he's not the only one who said this, sitting in a parliament, in a House of Commons, perhaps in a caucus room with people who might be the people uh, in this report, uh, that every caucus should look at themselves and say, have I been uh, conducting myself in, in a way that is proper, not just ethical, but uh, not betraying the, the country that I'm, I'm meant to represent. Uh, I should mention there was another allegation in the report as well about interference in conservative leadership races, uh, even the 2022 one. Um, but the Conservative Party says that uh, CSIS never informed them of that. So uh, th that's another tidbit uh, that we were looking for reaction for as well. So the calls, uh, Karina, for more transparency, uh, for action on the part of the government, what are they saying about that? So the government does say that they find this very concerning. Uh, Sean Fraser, the housing minister, said that it should be investigated. There was a lot of um, pushing it to law enforcement that that is their role to take uh, the next steps uh, if they can. Uh, obviously, they also point to Bill C-70, which is their new bill that they would like to get passed that they say will further combat foreign interference. Uh, but the public safety minister was steadfast when he was asked you know, about who these people might be, about um, more measures that need to be taken. And in terms of whether Canada and Canadians should have the right to know which parliamentarians this report is talking about, have a listen to what he had to say. I think Canadians need to know that the national security and intelligence agencies are doing the important work that they do. No other Western democracy announces the details of intelligence mm -hmm. investigations publicly, and to pretend that that's a reasonable uh, solution is not, I think, consistent with international practice or with what's necessary to protect the security of Canadians. Now, the government also denies acting too slowly, which has certainly been a lot of the criticism, not just in this report, but today uh, by critics. Uh, it lists all the measures it's put into place. As I said, it points to Bill C-70. 
But, Catherine, the report does say that the government did not seem truly seized with the urgency of the issue of foreign, intelli uh, foreign uh, interference until the stories hit the media. Uh, and so that is a very different take than what the government is saying uh, in terms of how serious they say they've been taking it. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. Thank you so much for this. The CBC's Karina Roman. Parliament Hill is reeling from a stunning national security report that alleges some parliamentarians are conspiring with foreign governments. The report was compiled and published by the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, or NSICOP. The committee doesn't name any names, but the report says some parliamentarians have uh, have wittingly rather helped foreign governments like China and India meddle in Canadian politics. Whether knowingly or through willful blindness, the report says some MPs accepted funds or benefits from foreign missions that were disguised to conceal their sources. It also says some parliamentarians shared privileged information on other MPs while knowing this information would be used by foreign officials to pressure these MPs to change their positions. And the report adds that some also responded to requests by foreign officials to improperly influence parliamentary business to the foreign state's advantage. The issue has sparked severe concerns amongst MPs. I believe if there's any evidence uh, that someone knowingly worked with a foreign government to influence our democracy, they should no longer be a member of parliament. It does bother me very much that in the same parliament where I work, some people might be voluntarily or involuntarily under the influence of a foreign power. I see this as not a partisan issue at all. I see this as an issue of the core national interest and the core strength of Canada's democracy. Here to weigh in on the report are two former directors of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, Richard Fadden and Ward Elcock. Welcome to you both. Um, Richard, I'll start with you. I mean, I read this and my jaw hit the floor. Both of you gentlemen are much more familiar with the world of security and foreign interference. How shocking was this for you? I was pretty surprised, to be honest. Um, like most people, I thought that this report would be somewhat similar to the previous ones and maybe supporting a little bit what Justice Hogg was going to say. But there was a considerable amount of detail provided in this report, and the fact that it attacks the behavior of parliamentarians, I think, is very serious. Any foreign interference is serious, but I think this suggests that the fact that over the course of the last several years, the government not taking this as seriously as it could have has come home to roost. Uh, the key now will be what in God's name is Parliament and the government going to do about it? Yeah, a very important question. Ward, I, I do want to start, though, by getting you on the allegations specifically and what went through your mind as you read uh, the list, some of the things that we were just talking about in the intro. Uh, well, frankly, what... I in contrast to Dick, it really wasn't a surprise for me. I, I have actually seen this before, um, and I'm not particularly surprised. Uh, it is, in some sense, uh, an inevitable part of of a uh, an immigrant country like ourselves. We we have some of these issues, and and we will continue to have some of these issues. Um, the difficulty is that um, it's easy to say that people have been assisting the foreign government. But what does that mean? Does it actually mean they have taken actions which uh, rise to the level of, uh, of offending a criminal statute? Um, can you, in fact, produce information uh, that would allow them to be prosecuted if they have? Um, it's actually a good deal more complicated than it looks. Uh, and I'm actually a little surprised, I guess, that they went as far as they did in identifying and identifying that there were individuals within Parliament who have have uh, crossed the line, uh, because that will. Do you think they should will... have? Ward Elcock, do you think? Uh, I wonder. Uh, my my concern is frankly that it may be very hard ultimately to launch a prosecution. I may the conduct may not rise to the level of the uh, of the statute's requirements. Uh, it's possible that we have intelligence, but we don't have enough mm -hmm. evidence to actually justify a prosecution. It's also possible that some of the information was derived from very sensitive techniques. I mean, if you have listening devices inside a foreign embassy, you don't go around admitting that, and you would have to in a, under our Charter of Rights if you were to actually prosecute anybody on the basis of that information. So 
it's it's a good deal more complicated than it looks in actually dragging this down to uh, uh, to a to a conclusion. Yeah, so I, I, I I am a little concerned they went as far as they did. What do you, what do you think about that, Richard? Well, I in this instance disagree with uh, with Ward. I don't think it's a matter of criminal prosecution. There's a constitutional convention which says that each both houses of parliament are the sole master of their procedures and of the treatment of their members. I agree with Ward, this is unlikely to result in a criminal prosecution, but there is no reason in my, in my mind why the leadership of the House uh, cannot take this very, very seriously, refer it to a committee on ethics, uh, refer it to leaderships of the party. There are any number of things they can do if you accept the fundamental principle, constitutional principle, that the House of Commons is a master of its fate and of its members. So I don't think we can probably get a prosecution, but the threshold for activity, for action by the House would be much lower. Now, I don't know if that threshold is met because I do agree with Ward, we don't have all of the information. But I think using as a, a reason for not proceeding the fact that we can't prosecute would be avoiding, I think, responsibility when the House does have responsibility for its members. Let me ask you then, Richard, I mean, you lay out a, a potential path forward there. Part of this, though, is the question that so many uh, politicians were being asked today, which is there will be a desire to know who the individuals are who are suspected here, even if this is intelligence and not evidence, which we have talked so much about in the past year or so. Um, it, it, can, can, can that be a public discussion? Is there a world where these the, the government or, um, or a security agency could name names? Richard? Well, I think initially you have to say they should not. I think you have to convince yourself, to my mind, not to the level of the criminal law, but to a reasonable level of conviction that there is something serious going on. There is in, the, in Canadian law provision that can, you can use to override the Privacy Act if you think it's in the national interest. But first, I would refer it to a committee on ethics, to the Board of Internal Economy, to the party leaderships, to somebody within the House to take a decision. Once that decision is taken, that there's been a serious violation of MPs' oaths and of their responsibility to Canada, then I think we should come to the issue of whether or not the matter should be made public, or their identity, I'm rather sorry, should be made public. Yeah. Ward, on that note, I mean, we were talking earlier in the show about the idea that MPs are going to go into caucus tomorrow. They have this report that says, um, hey, someone out there, it's possible, was taking information about your opinions and telling a foreign government about it in an effort to let them further influence your opinion. What would you, you say to MPs about um, the importance of naming names or not naming names at this moment? Well, I think it goes back to my earlier question. I mean, I think this really... This really does the fact that they've, in in a sense, cantered up to the identification identification of individuals without actually going there, leaves leaves open the question, leaves open a desire to have that information, and the pressure to have that information will only grow. I, I understand what Dick's suggesting. Um, the difficulty will be, frankly, that uh, whether it's whether it's the courts or whether it's Parliament. Uh, to some extent, if you're going to have this a process that, in a sense, tries an individual and their participation in other activities, you got to put some interest, some evidence on the ground, some evidence before a, a body, whether it's a, a, a parliamentary committee or a, a, a court. Obviously, if it's a parliamentary committee, not quite as much information. But the reality is much of this information will probably have been derived from pretty sensitive sources. As I said, I think if you have if you have intelligence being de that's being derived because you have listening devices inside a foreign embassy, um, it's pretty hard to put that in front of a court yeah. or a parliamentary committee to give them some certainty as to what actually they're dealing with. So uh, this actually is could get a lot more complicated before it comes to an end. Uh, Ward, I wonder what you think about the fact that this uh, we sort of referenced it off the top. There have been so many reports, right? There, there's Johnston, the Hug Commission, NSIRA, and now this report from NSICOP. Do you think um, at this moment it was in the government's interest to have so many groups 
scrutinizing this? I mean, certainly the, the Minister LeBlanc is saying that that is, look how committed we are to addressing this, but he's also now fielding, um, you know, a range of concerns and sort of saying, well, listen, you know, we just heard from Justice Ugg that uh, ultimately our democratic processes are still intact, and he has folks like myself saying, yeah, but you also commissioned this report and it's got some pretty nasty stuff in it. Uh, yeah, I would say two things. One, um, frankly, we have way too heavy a review process for uh, our intelligence process in this country. Uh, that's another issue for another day. Uh, I think the other, frankly, the other issue is that um, uh, the government has not actually acted on these issues as fast as it should have. Uh, and that, frankly, uh, is putting them behind the eight ball. Uh, you can defend yourself to some extent by saying repeatedly that you have all these organizations looking at these issues, and when you get those reports, you'll act. Uh, but I think this, this the, the, they, to the extent that actions could be taken, and I, I may be deceiving myself in the sense that it we may not be in a they may not be in a situation in which they can take actions either because the information is too sensitive or it's only intelligence and not evidence which is a, a continual problem in this part of the world in this part of uh, this particular subject matter uh but they they have left it alive for too long and, and i think that is a really problematic issue for the current government Richard Fadden, this brings us back to something um, that I think stood out to a lot of folks in the first UGG report, which was this question of how the faith of Canadians in their democracy has been uh, shaken a bit. So I, I guess in closing, I would ask you what you would say to Canadians about what they should think about this latest revelation and um, how they should understand it in the health of our democratic system and, you know, hopefully efforts to, to try to address that. Well, I, I guess I would say the fact that we've had this, these many inquiries is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have all these institutions that are looking at CSIS and other security agencies, and that's a good thing. But I think what will determine whether or not Canadians continue to have faith in not just the national security apparatus, but in their democratic processes will be whether or not somebody somewhere does something about these conclusions. I mean, we've been talking about this now to war Ward's point for several years now. If I were a, you know, a Canadian who wasn't sort of uh, steeped like you in national security issues, I would start to ask myself, you know, there was actually a report a while ago about NSCOP complaining that the government ignored its recommendations. Well, was it going to ignore these? Mm -hmm. And SARA has made a number of recommendations that have not been acted upon. We'll see what they do with Justice Hogg's thing, but at some point, I think Canadians are entitled to have an outcome. I may be overly optimistic in thinking that something can come of this, and Ward may be correct in the sense that, you know, intelligence to ev evidence will stop everything. I don't think that's the case. But somebody somewhere has to say more than I think Mr. LeBlanc said, it's a matter for law enforcement. That This is not entirely a law enforcement issue. It's also a political issue, small p political issue. And the political process, I think, has to demonstrate an outcome more than sort of thanking everybody for producing the report and saying they're going to study it. Okay. Listen, appreciate the insights from both of you gentlemen today. Thank you very much. Richard Fadden and Ward Elcock.